Gimaris Rosa in the Third Bank of the River and the short story by Gimaris Rosa, at Tercera Margem do Rio, in Primeras Historias, released in 1962, full of arrivals and departures, wanderings, and pilgrimages, but which bring with them a differential, they do not have a defined horizon. We find the story of a man who decides to live out his days in a canoe. Narrated in the first person by the son of a father who decides to abandon his family and all of society to live inside a small canoe in a huge river. His son, in an absorbed mixture of enchantment and confusion, will accompany him, even if from afar, until the moment when, by the river, he witnesses his father's passage to the third bank, the bank that transcends the everyday and the routine. If in other stories one walks somewhere, in this story one navigates to the third shore, one navigates to nothingness, to an undefined horizon that, despite being a horizon, is not palpable, predictable and much less described. And I can't forget about the day the canoe was ready. Faced with the son's request, Dad, will you take me with you in that canoe of yours? The father just looks, puts the blessing, and pushes the son away, sending him back with a gesture. By not accepting the son in his canoe, where only one person could fit, the father seems to point to the fact that everyone must have their own canoe. He only carried out the invention of staying in those spaces of the river, half and half, always inside the canoe, so as not to jump out of it, ever again. In the relationship between father and son, a process will be established that will culminate in a rite of passage, at the moment when the son, seeing his father already old, proposes to take his place in the canoe. And the father nods, as if he answers in the affirmative. The child goes through a moment in which, regardless of his decision, he will become a pattern in his existence. The tale tells of an initiation through which everyone who seeks to live his life beyond everyday life, often assuming religious characteristics. Gimaris Rosa gives a regionalist and universal tone to the tale, in a poetic prose style and specific orality, dealing with great dilemmas of human existence. In the fourth preface to Tutamia, Tercera's Historias, 1967, a book of short stories, the last work published in his lifetime, months before his death, Gimaris Rosa confesses that Tercera Margem do Rio came to me in the street, in a quick and sudden inspiration, so from outside, that I instinctively raised my hands to catch it, as if it were a ball coming to the goal, and I was the goalkeeper. Dot but what is the third bank? A riverbank can be found where two worlds, land and water, connect. Any river will have two banks, one on each side of the water. Rosa created a character who found a third bank of the river, a third way to separate the land from the river. When life prevents us from reaching this or another shore, we can only float on the third shore. The river is a traditional metaphor for time, that moves continuously, and at the same time remains timeless, and for change, that is also permanence. The father's action thus symbolizes the human need to transcend time, by staying in one place, while the river flows. Human beings at their most heroic, some would say at their most insane, are never willing to accept the fact that life is contained, just like water on both sides of a flowing river. Third bank of the river conveys that people in their lives are easily susceptible to the actions of others, and the burden of adjusting to the consequences of others' actions is your individual responsibility. The third edge does not exist in three-dimensional space, but it exists in five-dimensional and six-dimensional space. This is the extension of the mind, it is the reach of the will, it is the dream of the soul, it is the place of me. The author found a way for the father to exist, but not exist within the family. He is connected to his family, and weighs heavily on their minds, even though he is part of an entirely different world. He discovered this link, by establishing a third bank of the river. As this is the parent's choice, we must respect that choice. Even if we cannot do it, we have no right to resist and reject it. Since the author has the characteristic of thinking every word, and the word truth has such semantic force, it would be unfeasible to think of his use as a coincidence. Would the third margin, an expression no longer used in the body of the text, be a journey towards the truth? Or would it be the margin of conciliation between reason and madness? As the son says, however, the word crazy is never used in his house, because no one is crazy. Or perhaps everyone. Inspired by the father's posture, the son takes his initiatory path. But at the same time the path is personalized. It's not about walking the veins of the same river, or doing the same things your father did. Rather, it's about charting your own path, building your own canoe, assuming your own existence. The father goes on his way, and as he approaches the third bank his appearances will be less constant. Seeing the father in the distance, in his canoe, becomes less and less common. The memory of the father remains. The father is remembered when he eats the most delicious food, or on rainy nights. The memory of ancestors happens, when they are no longer present. The father becomes a memory, or even an abstraction and an image. More than his physical presence, his teachings become alive. The son highlights what he learned from his father, it was a father who taught me, 
How to do this one day, the process in which the son accompanies the father is long. After a long time accompanying his father, as he was already pointing out his first gray hairs, the son goes through a moment similar to that of a rite of passage. The son becomes infected with the father's dementia. But I knew that he had now become hairy, bearded, with long nails, ill and thin, turning black from the sun and his fur, looking like an animal, almost naked, even with the clothes that people from time to time provided. A striking moment is when the son proposes to take the father's place in the canoe. Do you come, and I, right now, whenever it may be, I'll take your place, from you, in the canoe. The beat of an accelerated heart shows the importance of the moment that was once a possibility and now comes true. To be initiated the son needed the approval of the father. The old father's nod is such approval. Now the son is called to take his place in the canoe, in the river and in life. It is not a question of taking a place with the father, but of taking his place. Was it time for the son to take his own place in the world? He listened to me. He got to his feet. He managed the oar in the water, heading this way, agreed. And I trembled, deep, suddenly, because, before, he had raised his arm and made a gesture of salute, first, then of so many years elapsed. And I couldn't, feeling unable to take the father's place, the son leaves the experience of initiation transformed. The son will now be a renegade, not for the family, still less for the father, but for himself. He feels ashamed for not having achieved success in the face of a long process of initiation. I suffered the severe cold of fears, I fell ill. I know that no one else knew about him. Am I a man after this failure? I am what he was not, what will remain silent. The canoe made of mahogany wood, which the father had made to sail down the river forever, metaphorically, can be seen as a coffin. And the most favorable moment to change places with the father in the canoe, is seen as a passage to the beyond, final sacrifice and transmission of spiritual inheritance. I know it's too late now, and I'm afraid to cut it short with life, in the shallows of the world. But then, at least, that, in the article of death, they take me, and deposit me also in a little canoe of nothing, in that water, which does not stop, with long banks, and, I, down the river, out the river, in the river, the river. The river is a traditional metaphor for time, that moves continuously and simultaneously remains timeless, and changes a permanence. Another significant river in Greek mythology is the river Styx, which ran through the infernal region, and had ambiguous or dual characteristics, which is also the name of the river of invulnerability, one of the rivers of Tartarus. According to one version of the Dionysus legend, a promise made from the Styx is the most sacred vow that can be made. Not even the gods can break a promise for the Styx. The father's action thus symbolizes the human need to transcend time by staying in one place while the river flows gently. As Gimaris Rosa wrote, the river does not want to reach, but to stay wide and deep.